The newly released Viltrox 56mm f1.7 lens is fast, has autofocus, and comes in at just about $150. There has to be a catch, right? Right? If you want to see sample images from this lens, video autofocus test, compare it to my current autofocus lenses, the best autofocus settings for video that I have found, some downsides and tips you can use to be able to get the best out of this lens, why I bought it, my general thoughts about the lens, and most importantly, if this lens is the right lens for you. Then keep watching. And there are chapter markers in case you want to skip to certain sections, so don't be scared to use them. But first, hi, I'm Captain Awesome, this is Geekception, and I really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe as it really helps me here. I also have memberships in case you want to stick around as that will go a long way. Let's start with a quick unboxing. On the box, I see the photo of the lens. On getting inside the box, and the first thing I see is the warranty card. Next, I see the user manual. There's also a nice carrying case that comes included. And finally, we see the lens itself, which already has the lens cap on. Taking a look at the lens and it is quite tiny. It uses a 52 millimeter filter thread and just like some other Viltrox lenses, it has a USB-C port at the back for firmware upgrades. And in case you are wondering, this is how it looks right next to a 13 millimeter f1.4 Viltrox lens. And of course, it is so much lighter than the 13 millimeter here. Now the 56 millimeter f1.7 from Viltrox is available for both the Fujifilm X mount and the Nikon Z mount. Now let's talk build quality and the Viltrox 56 millimeter lens here is plastic fantastic. Again, because of that price, I'm willing to let this go. But also because it is very small and compact and plastic, I think it pairs perfectly well with, say, my Fujifilm XS20 here, which I consider a more walk around camera compared to, like, let's say, my XH2S, which I just cannot imagine myself bringing with me every single place. Now, I went out and took over 200 photos with the Viltrox 56mm f1.7 lens here. And throughout this video, you'll be seeing some of the photos I've taken with the lens. Now starting with the first important question, why did I buy this lens? And that's a great question and I think the first reason why is because of the size. I currently have two other autofocus lenses for my Fujifilm cameras. The first being the Sigma 18 to 50 f2.8 while the second is the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. And while the Sigma is small and light and has a good zoom range, there are times that I often wish that it was just a little bit smaller, especially when you consider that it actually zooms out to become longer. Longer. The Viltrox 13mm on the other hand is a beast of a lens. For my talking headshots like this, especially for YouTube, this lens is great. The only issue is that it's quite heavy and other than shooting a talking head like this for YouTube or even maybe TikTok, I don't really use it much. And while you can absolutely use it for street shots, nobody is stopping you, I just think it's a little bit too wide. This is where I think the Viltrox 56mm f1.7 lens really excels. Compared to those lenses, it is light, compact and for my second reason, in, this focal length is my favorite. You know how before you take a photo you can kind of see it in your mind's eye? Well, almost all the photos that I see in my mind eye usually require like a telephoto lens. And personally, I think a telephoto lens is the best walk around lens because it can take portraits really well. So if you encounter people, you have no problems there. It can compress scenes into multiple layers, which is something that I love to do, where you can be able to bring something really far away and something really close by and just flatten them out, but with multiple layers. And I think the most important one is that it actually challenges me, right? On like a zoom, let's say my 18 to 50 millimeter, um, you know, I can just zoom and so, sort of cheat. But with a prime lens like this, especially with a long focal length like this, I really have to think about how to get a shot and work within those constraints. And I think my third reason here is just the affordable price, which I think is one of the best selling points for this lens. I got it here in Malaysia for 699 Malaysian ringgit, which roughly translates to about 147 US dollars. And I think it's a great deal. Just as an aside, as a Fuji shooter, this is one of the reasons why I recommend Fujifilm to my friends because you can get really, really nice lenses, even if it's the 18 to 50 millimeter here, and it does not cost as much as some other camera systems. <laughs> Sony. Because you're telling me we're getting this 56 millimeter for just lesser than $150? That is insane. If you are wondering how you can select a lens to buy for your next lens purchase, well, this is a tip I used, and this is one I think you can uh, employ as well. So, funny story here. So I initially saw this lens when Viltrox posted about it on Twitter and I was like, I have to have it. But then I sort of got in my own head with the Sigma um, 
30 millimeter f1.4 for fuji where i was thinking okay this lens you know 30 millimeters i can be able to use it on the street i can be able to use it in the studio right here and maybe it's a better all-around lens because this lens you really have to commit to the bit this is a telephoto lens like you like in a small space like mine here like i really cannot you know use this for everything right but then um you know if you are wondering how what is your next lens purchase going to be well this is the tip i use which is to open your lightroom go to your search bar um, by filter uh, click on i think search for focal length and you can put in your own custom focal length so for me i think i put in 50 millimeter and 55 millimeters and i took a look at those photos i examined you know uh, 30 millimeters as well 33 millimeters because i had a view truck 33 millimeter lens before and when i you know spent hours going through all the focal lengths that i've uh, shot on before uh, there's just something about this 50 millimeter to 55 millimeter range that you know for i, I would say full frame is 85 millimeters that speaks to me on a very creative level and immediately i saw the 50 millimeter photos i'd taken in the past or even i think the 55 millimeters there was no turning back i had to get this lens which is a perfect segue into the next section which is what am i going to use this lens for well for me i think there are three main places where i'm going to use this lens the most and i think the first one is definitely for street photography like i've said before i really really like that 85 millimeter full frame equivalent and i think is just the perfect you know uh, carry around lens for me on my camera permanently the second is for shooting video b-roll here for my youtube channel and i think because of that 56 millimeter and the f1.7 i can be able to really really get some delicious video footage out of this and i think the third is thumbnail photos so some of the thumbnail photos you've seen on my channel i intend to start using this lens to capture them okay photo review time now i've taken several shots with this in fact almost 300 at my last count. Here's a one minute montage of some of my favorites. Okay, welcome back what did you think of those photos be sure to let me know in the comment section down there below as for me i have thoughts about it first is how i really love the 56 millimeter here or 85 millimeter full frame equivalent as when i think of a photo to take most of the times i'm thinking of taking it with a focal length like this and when i went out to take photos most of the photos I got, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I see in my mind. And this is what I'm able to capture. Second is speed. The autofocus here was very fast, accurate, and also very silent. And of course, your camera autofocus uh, mode matters here. Uh, for me, the autofocus mode I used was area with eye tracking turned on, depending on if I wanted to get a portrait or not. And the third is f-stop. And because this is a f1.7, you best believe I'm going to be taking photos in f F1.7, baby! And even at F1.7, I was actually very pleased with how sharp some of the center of the images were, especially since I might be editing some of them, but most of the time, I'll probably just be using it straight out of camera. And I really like the nice subject separation, especially in some shots where I thought that I could have gotten a bit closer and maybe it was a bit too wide, but on reviewing it, I was like, wow, it still manages to separate the you know, subject from the background pretty decently. And in case you are wondering, here is my custom Astra film simulation 
on screen right now. And I'll leave the professionals to zoom in at 300% and tell you about chromatic aberration and vignettes and all of that. But I did notice that at f1.7, there is a, a ton of vignetting, which I do not mind actually. When I edit, I tend to actually vignette my photos anyway. Stop down to f2.8 and it gets better. f4 and you are almost in heaven. And for most of the time that I took these photos, I did not go above f4 because it's a 1.7 lens, come on. From what I've been able to tell, if you want a good middle ground, I would say f2.8 is great most of the time. And while yes, I would say I plan on shooting a lot of photos at f1.7 here, the contrast definitely suffers at f1.7 and also the sharpness as well. So uh, stop down at f2.8 or even f4 preferably, you really get so much better contrast out of your images. And there's an included lens cap that comes with the lens here, but um, when it comes to flaring, I would say it did not really help much. Uh, some of the shots that I took at night, I noticed that it did flare quite a bit. Whether I had the flare cap on or not, or lens cap on rather, it did not really matter much. It, it This right here is a flary boy. Okay, maybe photos is not my forte, but video or oh, video I love. Let's talk about video. <music> Starting with video autofocus speed, I tested several autofocus settings for this lens. For AF mode, I always use area, and when I'm in the shot or there's a subject in the shot, I always make sure to turn on eye tracking as well. And on first impressions, I must say, I thought this lens was broken because it was just so slow in picking me up. Like, I'm just going to keep talking here so that you can just see how slow this is in real time, and I don't want to fast forward it, I just want you to just see how slow it was in picking me up, and I genuinely thought that, oh, Wait a minute, is that why this lens is cheap? So what did I do? Well, you know, the thing I know how to do, Pinky, which is to just keep experimenting with some of the different autofocus settings until I got the one that I thought was almost close enough to being usable. And even then I noticed that the moment I leave the shot suddenly and I come back in, it still doesn't pick me up as quickly or it just takes its sweet time. Like, okay, I guess I have nothing else to do than wait for you, Viltrox 56 millimeter F 1.7 XF. And after multiple tries and multiple settings and multiple walks, towards the camera and multiple looking at the footage and multiple multiple multiples here are some of my recommended settings for the um fujifilm well not fujifilm viltrox 56 millimeter f1.7 lens and i tested these settings both on my xh2s which i'm using to record right now and also the fujifilm xs20 so under af mf in the menu you want to change the tracking sensitivity to two and af speed to two and basically what that means is that this lens is definitely one that requires requires a faster response from your autofocus settings. So depending on your camera, if you have the cameras I have right here, or you have an older uh, X uh, camera system from Fujifilm, or even a newer one, this is maybe a good base to start with. I would say um, it definitely requires, you know, for you to be on the faster side in the settings. So I think that should be something that you should try. But yes, the moment I switch to that, um, you know, I would say, you know, it picked me up relatively quickly and perhaps it's also still not the best performer in autofocus, I would have to admit to you. But hey, it's $150 and it's also like very tiny and it's very cute. So maybe I forgive it a little bit. Next, let's talk minimum focusing distance. And I found out that you can get fairly close to this lens, which is about uh, 1.8 feet as stated here on the lens. Though just because of how much you can feel the frame, because again, this is a 85 millimeter um, full frame equivalent lens, you probably not want to, to be honest. Now, if you want to use this for product photography or in my case, product videography, especially for like reviews on my channel here on YouTube, then I have a mildly bad news for you. You. Because unlike people, for example, where you want to maintain a healthy distance to be able to get separation from them and the background, for products, most times you want to get as close as possible, especially if you're trying to, you know, really highlight a specific part of a product. And it saddens me to say, but you just cannot get as close as you would like, or at least in my case, um, you know, it really left a lot to be desired when it comes to just the minimum focusing distance, especially with products on a table. And sadly, the bad news does not end there because 
This is the f1.7 lens, and if you are planning on shooting video with it at f1.7, it saddens me to say, and believe me, I tried, okay? Uh, shooting it at f1.7 is just so soft and it lacks so much contrast. And obviously, stopping down to f2.8 really, really improves this and, you know, helps the image. And it's just a bit sad that you cannot shoot this wide open or, I mean, nobody's stopping you again. You can shoot this absolutely wide open, but you're just going to suffer from a lot of lack of contrast. And I think for me, 99% of the time, I will probably be shooting this for video specifically at f2.8. Now remember all of the disappointment about not being able to get close? Well, enter here the DGFU adapters from Viltrox, coincidentally. I, like I had this laying around for I think the past three years and it just suddenly came in handy. Now this is how it can help this lens right here to be able to actually get closer to subjects that you cannot get by default. So basically, um, when I put this on, I have them in two sizes here, the 10 millimeter and the 16 millimeter. It actually reduces the minimum focusing distance. And now you can be able to get uh, closer and, you know, both for videos and photos to be able to capture, you know, for me specifically products, which I was not able to capture before. And I personally prefer the 10 millimeter as it closes the cap just enough that I would want the lens to have by default but unlike the 16 millimeter which I think is just too much and I think most of the time when I use the 16 millimeter it was a little bit more closer to a macro um, you know capability than it is to just reducing that minimum focusing distance but a word of caution which is that if you're going to be using this extension tubes right here uh, you know, my favorite feature of this lens wide open, which is not my favorite thing, which is that it really, really loses a lot of contrast. And this is made even more apparent when you use this extension tube. So one thing I recommend, which I did a lot of the times with using this extension tube is to stop down. So I stopped down to like F7 or F8 and I just pumped up like my brightness of my um, LED light. And, uh, you know, it's that's how I've been able to get like really, really nice shots with it. But yes, that is something to take into account if you plan on purchasing something like this, which I think you should, whoa, 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 which I think you absolutely should. Now, here comes the fun part because that part involves you. Who is this lens for? And I think the first is if you actually like the 56 millimeter or full frame equivalent 85 millimeter field of view, whether it is for street photography, whether it is for portraits and bonus points that it is fast. F1.7, baby. And second, I think it might be for you if you want something that is very, very compact and light. Say you are tired of heavy zooms or even primes and you want to pair it with your camera for me in this case, which is the XS20. And you want this very small package that you can just put in a, like a little sling bag then. Yeah, absolutely. This lens is perfect for all of that. And I think it works brilliantly for street photography. It's a great combo which is like, you know, light camera body, light lens for, you know, street photography, for even portraits as well, for even your back. Come on, you know, you're, we're not getting any younger. So something that definitely takes the weight off is something that I will always appreciate. And lastly, it might be for you if you want something that is cheap, but with autofocus. And if I'm being honest right now, I know there are so many cheap options for Fujifilm, especially when it comes to primes like this. I also have like a 55 millimeter f1.4, which is a completely manual lens. And that is the theme, right? You see lots of lenses in this category. They're all manual. They don't have autofocus. They don't have that, you know, maybe they even have brighter apertures, but you know, they are not compact. They are not light. They are not at $150, which I think is still such a great price. So yeah, when it comes to uh, something cheap, but you also get all of these features. I'm really scratching my head to see if there is any other options, honestly. I mean, seriously, like let me know in the comments if there is another option to this a lens on a Fujifilm X mount, I would love to know. Plus points that the autofocus you get here is also whisper quiet. It's also very fast. And yeah, like it's, it's for me, when I saw the announcement on Twitter, I just felt, man, this is the perfect lens for me right now. Okay, so who is this lens not for? Well, for one, build quality. And if you're someone who values, you know, let's say weather sealing, you value having an aperture ring, let's say for like something on the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4, which has that aperture ring here. This has none of that. So yeah, if you value all of those things and maybe your job or your shooting style requires that you have weather sealing, then yeah, this lens is definitely not for you. This is plastic 
fantastic right here. And I think the second is most importantly, if this is not the focal length for you. And just like I love this 85 millimeter focal length, well, full frame equivalent, 56 millimeter here. I keep saying 85 millimeter because I think that's how I see it in my head, right? But if you do not like this focal length, then no matter how cheap it is, even if it were free, you probably will not still enjoy using this much. So I would say stay away from it and just go find yours, man. You know, open Lightroom, look for some of the photos you've taken, Um, you know, go to Treads or go to any of the places you we check out photos. Like, Lord knows it's not Instagram anymore. Um, And, you know, just look for the kind of focal length that you like and just go for that instead. Now, wrapping up this video, and I would say, um, if you cannot already tell by how long this video has been, by how excited I am about it, by just how many shots I took in my first, you know, 12 hours, I took almost 300 photos and like, you know, I, it, I say 12 hours, but it was mostly like just in three hours. I just went out and I take like 300 photos. So yeah, I'm really excited about this lens. Um, it is now going to be permanently on my Fujifilm XS20 right here because I, you know, just see this as the perfect package really. Like, you know, I did not fall into the X100V or X106 hype because let's be honest, I do not like that like focal length. I always feel like 23 millimeters is just too short and even 35 millimeters, I think, or even 50 millimeters, I think, full frame equivalent here. It's just like, it's just not long enough. So I I have been waiting literally for a lens like this. We've been praying for days like this and I finally get to have it. And whether you're going to buy this lens or not, whether you're going to, you know, purchase this or not, whether you're going to pair it with your camera or not, I say the most important thing is outside of all of those things, just make sure that you are taking photos, make sure you're enjoying the experience, make sure you are you know, not just buying gear for the sake of it. And, you know, it's nice to be able to watch all of this and see other people's experience and all of that. I do it all the time. I window shop on YouTube all the time. I'm not sure if you do it as well. But I think apart from that is just, you know, keep shooting, keep having fun, keep taking photos. And, you know, I'm not a professional photographer. Yes, video I do, but not photos. I would say for me, photos is just a way I get to just go out and just, you know, enjoy and just work my brain. And I think this is the perfect tool to be able to do all of those things. And honestly, I love that for me. And if this is the case for you as well, Please let me know in the comment section, um, you know, why you like the 85 millimeter uh, focal length. Or if this is not the case, let me know what is your focal length that you prefer. Do you like zooms or do you have a specific focal length that you prefer? Let me know as well in the comment section below. And this video has been long enough. I'm looking at it on my screen right now and it is 56 minutes. I don't know how much it will be when you're watching this on YouTube right now. So it's definitely a lot for me to cut down, but I really, I was so excited about this like i think the guy who i bought it from well the company i bought it from here in malaysia they literally told me that you are the second person who has bought it from us in the entire country so yeah this is super new and i was so hyped i just immediately went out and took all of those photos so yes a little rambly ramb because that is what you get here because I am Captain Awesome. This is Geekception. I really do hope you consider liking, uh, leaving a comment, subscribing, as those will really help the channel and those will really help me. And if you really wanted to go above and beyond, I have um, you know links in the description right there to my PayPal, to my coffee page, to also YouTube memberships here in case you want to support that way. That would really help a lot and just you know help me buy more gear like this because I really appreciate that I can just buy stuff like this and do it myself. So yes, thank you so much for watching. I'm Captain Awesome. This is Geekception and I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to stay awesome. Bye.